moderately bullish on 2019. That's I think that's a one step above cautiously optimistic. Isn't it? <laughs> that's is right. It, it, where, where does that rank? That's pretty good. I, I, I'd be happy if we had a moderately bullish year, I think. Yeah, you know, if you think about the, the markets going up mid to high single digits this year, I think we'd all be happy. I think so, too. Yeah. Or, are we up that? We're, we're there right now, I think. We're there right now. We think we still have a ways to go. And I think one of the important messages in the context of this outlook is that there's likely to be a lot of volatility along the way. There's uncertainty on so many fronts, whether it's fiscal, trade, and importantly, monetary policy, that uh, in the context of that moderate, really bullish outlook for the year, uh, it's not going to be a straight line up. And it, it hasn't been so far. Do we get two hikes, zero hikes? A cut? What do you think? From, we think from, that the Fed's going to have to be a little bit uh, more easy this year than they'd like to be. A big part of the debate right now in monetary policy is what is the, the neutral or normal rate of interest in the United States. And it's kind of interesting if you track how this has moved over the course of a long period. The natural rate of interest in the U.S. has come down by about 2 percent in the past 20 years. And so when the Fed says that they have to be data driven or you hear Jay Powell say that finding the normal rate is like walking through a dark room full of furniture. It's because at this point it's a little bit hard to say where we are. But uh, we pay a lot of attention to a model of the normal rate of interest uh, that was actually developed by the New York Federal Reserve President John Williams, which suggests that uh, it's maybe just about um, on a real basis, 50 basis points, 60 basis points. Um, and when you think about it that way, we may be already about there um, where the Federal Reserve's What's rates are. What's the most important thing that, that determines where the neutral rate is? It, it, I've always thought it's inflation. And, and I can explain why inflation could be in a secular, uh, disinflationary, in, in, for, because of technology and, right. and advances and innovation and, and, and the Internet and Amazon yes. and Walmart and, and on and on. But I could also explain it that, you know, maybe we're not as global as we were a year ago, but um, mm -hmm. when you see the rest of the world and where interest rates are there, we kind of import their disinflation as well. So, I mean, I, right. I could explain it that 3% that is normal now instead of 6%. And their demand for our bonds keeps our interest rates lower, right. even as our changing demographics with more and more people entering retirement, higher demand for fixed income keeps our interest rates lower. Uh, in, in addition to the point that you're making about inflation, which I agree with, I point to productivity. Uh, and so when you think about what defines kind of the long-term natural rate, um, it's productivity growth, which has come down over time in the U.S. And, you know, there are serious questions about, you know, we've seen GDP numbers rise last year. But is that kind of a long term permanent condition or where will we land in the end? So will you when you're investing, is your first um, order to try to make money or is it to have a, a an impact that's positive socially or can a company just in and of itself have a positive impact by doing what it what it does as a company without even considering what the social impact is? I mean, if you employ people, if you satisfy your, your customers, uh, if you build uh, market share for shareholder or, or uh, you know, prosperity for shareholders, is that enough? Well, I, I hope we have some clients watching. Our first order is definitely to try to make money. Yeah. Uh, but the question is over what term? Um, we tend to be long term investors at Materin. And when you're a long-term investor, then questions about who your corporation is in society, who it is for its customers and with its stakeholders become more important. Um, if you're in a short-term game, then questions about climate change, uh, social change, changes in the workforce, community responsibility don't matter. But if you know you're going to be in a stock for years, you really have to start wondering how a company is preparing uh, for those themes. And so we think that when it comes to sustainability, uh, that as a long-term investor, that that's an integral part of uh, winning in the, in the end.